God of love, God of grace, God of surprises. We are grateful for the moments of love and community that we share. We know that you are with us. We know the promise we have in you. And yet we live with our hurt in the present and the uncertainty for the times ahead. We wonder what the future holds for us and those around us. We pray for our churches and our communities of faith that we may be beacons of hope, promise, peace and inclusive love for our neighbours. We pray in the hope that we know in Jesus, whom we see and know in the fullness and grace and love of God. Amen. Welcome to Church from the Manse Garden. And this is an offering brought to you by the Diamond Valley Parish of the Uniting Church in Australia. It's a little different from our ordinary church because we're still in that era of being asked by our government to stay at home, to work from home if we possibly can. And that's linked us with people around the world and through family and friendship networks all over the place. It's been a real joy to have people coming in to support us during this time and we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing without that extended family support and the richness of this community. We are still in the season of Easter. It's the seventh week of Easter. Next week will be Pentecost and we're focusing on those themes that new life comes from that which seems dead. This week I um, went into the Hurstbridge Church to light the Christ candles and I found on the altar some beautiful everlasting daisies, different pastel colours and I brought them home and I've been running them through my fingers and scattering the seeds out into new garden beds that I've prepared. They will in time make beautiful new bouquets. In doing this I've been thinking of the prayer of St Francis that says it is in dying that we are born to new life. Today we'll be going for a trip out to the former Plenty Uniting Church and that's a church that hasn't operated with services for about 35 years and we thought it was well and truly gone but it's come to new life through community use and we'll be having a look at what's going on there. Justin Hill is going to do a reflection on Matthew 6 and our friends from Camberwell Salvation Army have offered their support with some contemporary worship songs which are recorded in different parts of Melbourne but also with one singer and keyboard player coming in from Japan where he is working and studying at the moment. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oh uh -huh. 
conversations in our parish are a time when we talk about life and faith. Today we don't have the armchairs because we're actually on an official construction site. The former Plenty Uniting Church has been relocated from down Yan Yin Road to this site. The guys are here still working but we've popped in. Sue was a former member of the church. What memories are coming back for you today? Oh, it's wonderful to see the church in such tremendous condition. Uh, we, Derek and I were married in 1977 and we we're living in North Ringwood and building a house at Yarrambat. So we drove past the Plenty Church several times a week. When we moved into the house at Yarrambat, we started to attend church there. Now, the congregation was about five elderly ladies, but they were very welcoming. It had an enormous Sunday school, this church. Cars would pull up, children would get out of the cars, run down the path to the hall. There were about 30 children in the Sunday school and about five in the congregation. But our first son was baptised in this church. Um, when it was decommissioned, Derek helped move the hall down to um, Hurstbridge, where it is today. But it was a, a lovely church, lovely feel inside. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 29, the message version. If you decide for God living a life of God worship. It follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There is far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God and you count far more to him than birds. Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? All this time and money wasted on fashion. Do you think it makes that much difference? Instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. They never primp or shop. And have you ever seen colour and design quite like it? The ten best-dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside. And it's been extensively redecorated and has been actually handed over to the Plenty Historical Society. So it's going to go on in the life of the community. So how do you feel that although we don't own it anymore, there's still a sense of love and connection here? I think it's absolutely wonderful that it has another life. It was a beautiful building to go into as a church to worship and to meet. It was a lovely building to go into when it was Sugar Buds, the um, mm. gift shop. Mm. Uh, and it's a, a lovely building now and it's been wonderfully restored. And to think that uh, this, this building will last in the community to give pleasure to people mm. for years to come. It's just very exciting. It made me think we actually had a sneak preview inside and it's looking absolutely wonderful. But it made me think that even though the church doesn't own it, there is still something sacred about this site. Mm. And a bit like Kids Hope, you know, that we can go into the schools and we can be the feet and hands of Jesus, but we don't necessarily always have to have the big T-shirt saying Jesus written across us. What sort of feelings are you getting with that? Yeah, I quite agree. This church was lovingly built by Christians to worship God. Think of the number of prayers and hymns sung. Mm. And that, that is part of the building. No matter what the life of the building, mm. it, is, it is God's house. Mm. And it always will be. And it's there to say to the community, God is important in our lives and the life of the community for as long as it remains. Well, after the pandemic is over, we're hoping to come and have tea and cake here with the Historical Society members. But in the meantime, um, please note that the relationships are good and we'll be back here as soon as we can. Our loving God, as we pray outside this historic Plenty Church, we think back 100 years to those who faced the deadly flu pandemic just like we face the coronavirus pandemic today. We thank you for their courage in adversity 
so closely following the heavy losses of the First World War. God grant us the understanding and perseverance to follow their example, the breadth of vision to care about the worldwide multitudes who lack the resources and know-how of Australia, and the determination to do everything in our power to share our good fortune. We thank you for the commitment of public health and safety professionals and volunteers who face daily risk of contagion. And Lord, in our preoccupation with our own health issues, give us grace to still face our worldwide family responsibilities to care and act about suffering through war, terrorism, fire, flood, cyclones, earthquake, drought and famine. For your love's sake. Amen. Do not worry, says your Bible in red. Your feelings aren't welcome, says a voice in your head. And the people that you read this with will take it as it stands. But maybe you have one or more things resting on the other hand, held in your right to be seen by their left. The weight of this shame strips you bare, you're bereft. As a church seeks an answer in the Sermon on the Mount and you contemplate the thoughts, the voice now shouts, you've got clothes, you've got food, bartering for context in a first century world. Look at the birds, look at what he does, seeking out context in a post-pandemic world. Why do you worry, says the Bible in red, compares you to a flower and a guy who is dead. And the sense that you get as you toil and you spin is the rat race stops when you're frail and you're thin. What if you've been trying to seek the kingdom first, but the patterns in your wheat field keep treading the same dirt? What if tomorrow stokes a trauma that lasts and the troubles of today are just burns from your past? What kind of worry is the question that I ask? It can't be catch all when you look at how it starts. Seminary professors with a finger to a screen in capitals, therefore, what does that mean? What's Jesus talking of prior to this bit? You can't serve two masters or you're going to get hit with a stack of insecurity sitting on your throne, watching your back. Is your Absalom known? Don't use this text as a catch-all cry to beat down nervous people when their souls are bled dry. Look at what it says about idolatrous hearts and what it means for you as a shopper when a second wave starts. Lord, please forgive us for our simplicity, for managing mental health in cliched complicity. Lord, please help us to seek your kingdom first, to serve one master, to love you when it hurts. In community news this week, when we were talking last week about autumn leaves floating down like ballerinas, Heather remembered that she'd done some creative journaling last year using exactly the same images. And so she has sent in copies of her pages to help inspire us. Artists are encouraged to every morning when they hop out of bed, do what is called morning pages. Get out your pens and paper and write and draw what is ever in your mind. This helps clear away all the cobwebs so that we can be nice and fresh and creative throughout the whole day. The birds. People are noticing as we worship at home that the birds are joining in the hymns. Leslie and Anne have sent in their photos of birds during home worship. I want to give a really big shout out to our Facebook friends on the community pages of Hurstbridge, Water Glen and Diamond Creek for not only buying from our stalls but also supplying goods for us to sell. This week we calculated that it costs $25 a week to run the fridges that are used by the Rotary's Second Bite project. It's your help that enables us to keep going in these areas. It's also been a great gathering point for people who are homeschooling their children to come and get some craft supplies, cooking ingredients, learn how to pot up herbs and succulents. If you don't have the money, don't worry. Just make this a what you can afford place so that we can share resources 
and community and connection together. Rest for the ravaged earth, oceans and streams plundered and poisoned our future, our dreams. Lord, end our madness, carelessness, greed. Make us content with the things that we need. Lighten our darkness, breathe on this flame, until your justice burns brightly again, until the nations learn of your ways, seek your salvation and bring you their praise. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.